to She Wasn't Born Yesterday for women who are 40 plus fabulous by the Emptiness Chicks. I'm Janet Evans, ex MNC Saatchi advertising creative who have won numerous radio and TV awards. Not that that'll affect us because we're doing a podcast. And I'm Dr. Amelia Haynes, who has been a medical doctor for 30 years and specialising in sexual health and mental health and relationships, you know, and I'm generally a very useful human being. Well, you know, we'll find out about that, but <laughs> we are here to work together. People tell me on good authority uh, that I am. Really? <laughs> yes, well, they never say that to me, so I think we're the perfect hosts for She Wasn't Born Yesterday. Dr. Amelia, how are you? It's good to see you again today. You're looking fabulous. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit obsessed with that brooch you're wearing. It is in the I shape know. of a heart. And we are going to talk to someone very special and interesting about hearts down the track, mm. but not today. Because <laughs> really? today we're going to talk about <laughs> one of my favourite, favourite topics, which is food. Oh, yes. I know you I love, love food. food. I, I love food. I love food. I think food doesn't yeah. always love me, but I love, love, love food. You do. I Especially, know. you know, what I do, and this is really interesting, is... Um, <laughs> it maybe, better not, be. Not, it <laughs> better be. Maybe it's not that interesting. <laughs> but <laughs> what I do, like... We're in my 20s, like, I used to be able to, you know, chow down on the Reuben sandwich at lunch and then I'd have, like, a muffin and then a chocolate bar and then a cup of coffee and then I'd be hungry about 3 o'clock and then, you know, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd power on through the day. But uh, now, like, I'm 40-plus fabulous. I find yeah. that if I have, like, a, a sandwich or a pasta, like a leftover pasta, oh, man, i gotta have a, I got to have a nana nap, a power nap about 3 o'clock. I just cannot function. But, you know, the other thing I do, and this, yes. this is the thing that may or may not be interesting, <laughs> yes, yes. is <laughs> what I do is I sort of balance out my diet now so that if I have a salad, I feel yeah. very, very virtuous yeah. and that entitles me to a treat. Okay. But, you know, what I do think is, and what we're here to talk to about today, mm. is how our, like, nutrition needs change, like the relationship we have with food, how that changes when we sort of get a bit mature, like 40 plus fabulous, and what happens to our bodies and what sort of food do we actually need and how does that change? To give us a bit of food for thought, we're here with an expert today. He's a dietitian and nutritionist and his name is Naris Lapsus and he's in Singapore. So we've gone global, baby. I know. We've got a guest from who's international. International. And Mm -hmm. Naris, it is great to have you on our podcast. Thank you so much for for having me today. I'm looking forward very much to talking to you on all fronts when it comes to food. Oh, okay. So what can you tell us about your background and what you actually do? Okay, so (laughs) I've got a long background. So I, I began my career as a research scientist. So uh, I, I did a PhD uh, back in Adelaide uh, and then took that PhD with me to Sydney, uh, worked for nearly 10 years on metabolic health and metabolic diseases. Uh, so I sort of started playing in the field of diabetes and uh, other kind of health conditions that start to affect us as we all get a little older. Uh, I realized that academia really wasn't my best calling. (laughs) Uh, And after 10 years in science, I extracted myself out uh, and I did a master's degree in nutrition and dietetics. Wow. So Mm. academia Mm. did kind of suit you, but anyway, carry on. (laughs) Yes, Mm. yes, Mm. I would think that qualifies as academia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) But what was your PhD on? What, What were you doing? Uh, so I was looking at the genes that might be responsible for obesity, particularly in men. Oh. Uh, so it was quite specific. Uh, it was it was interesting, and it was sort of in the back in the sort of times when we were really starting to look at lots of different genes at one time. So technology was starting to explode. Uh, And when I started my PhD, you could only really look at one gene at a time. And then by the time I was getting to the end of my PhD, the way technology had moved and the types of tools that were available, you could look at many, many genes at one time. So like it was an interesting period, um, but I just didn't want to be in a lab Mm. pipetting for the rest of my days. Mm. So then I moved um, into away from the bench and and with people. 
So yes. I did a master's degree in nutrition and dietetics. Yeah. Uh, I opened up uh, my first you know, nutrition consultancy uh, in Sydney. And then really for the next 20 years, that's where I've sat. But through that 20-year period, there's been interest in sports dietitian sort of aspect of things. But then the, the big ticket item, which was living longer, living healthier longer, yeah. the whole concept of longevity and longevity medicine. Uh, and that's really been my major foray in the last eight years. But of course, all the things that I've picked up along the way all fit into play now. So the science, the research, the nutrition aspect of it, the academic aspect of it, um, if everything, it's all falling into place now uh, and it's applying everything to improve people's health. Wow, like a oh perfect pudding. It's got all the ingredients. It does. I was going to say, I feel like um, we can really take what you tell us today very, very seriously. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you seem to have uh, given us all of your credentials, so to speak, and mm -hmm. uh, we, we actually trust you. Yeah. <laughs> That's handy. That's handy. <laughs> but the, it's interesting. I thought you, you were talking about this obesity gene and in men, does that mean that more men are obese than women? Not necessarily, right? Yeah. But men and, uh, men and women are obviously very different mm. uh, and men accumulate fat in places different from where, men, where, where women do, but then interestingly up until a certain point. So when women start to uh, sort of experience symptoms of menopause and post-menopause, hormones start to change. Mm. Uh, women start to take on a bit more of a male hormone aspect and then start to mimic what happens with men. But, you know, as I said, men are different and men can accumulate fat in and around the organs, which is called visceral fat, mm. more so than women. And, and it's that fat that is one that's really linked to lots of health conditions. Uh, and so I was targeting, and it was, it was targeting central obesity mm. in men. That was, that was how specific my, mm. my, um, my work was. Wow. So, um, you know, so... Do we have kind of more tendency to put on weight as we age? And why, why is that, do you think? Yeah, so for, for lots of different reasons. So if you sort of even think back uh, ourselves, you know, how much did you move around when you were younger, for example? So as we get older, we tend not to, to move as much. Uh, as we get older, quite often we're, you know, also taking on board more responsibilities, mm. Your, you know, you have periods of your life where you're working longer hours or you're um, rearing a family. And so the time that you used to spend doing the things that let you move around have changed. So that can be different. Uh, as we get older, quite often we're taking on more, there's more stresses or more responsibilities. And then how do we respond to that? Uh, we may end up responding by how we choose to eat. So there's, you know, lots of things can send us down that path. Yeah. The kind of medications that we might take, uh, where our hormones lie, uh, whether we've slowly started to develop the health conditions that ultimately really impact us later on. They can affect our metabolism. And so then we become what's you know, called like metabolically dysregulated yeah. as we get a little bit older. So that can have an impact on us. So there are many that can send us down that front. And then for other people, it's the flip side. You have people who are losing weight as they get older and losing yeah. muscle and mm. wasting muscle. Two sides to the coin here. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, fascinating. I think I fall into that latter category. I feel like I've actually lost weight over the years. If people could you know? see Janet too, they'd be going, <laughs> oh, my goodness, this is not a good thing. This woman <laughs> is quite slim anyway no, and look who's very talking. bouncy. Look who's talking. You mm -hmm. are, baby, you are. Mm -hmm. And Naris, you are obviously taut, trim and terrific. So do you have yeah. a particular <laughs> diet that you follow, like s stringently? Well, if you think about what I do for a living, I feel that I can't, I can't be an imposter on <laughs> no, this front. No, no. So I'm, I'm under scrutiny. So I can let me. I, what I can tell you is nobody invites me out for dinner anywhere ever. <laughs> nobody <laughs> invites me for. None of my clients invite me for any fun stuff. Oh, oh no! This is no, not a good. It's this true. is a good it's sales true. kind of it's terrible. <laughs> Man, you're not. Bad pitch, bad because, pitch. Because it's, it's like they know I've got, I've got to set this tone. I've got to sort yeah. of say this, you know, I've, I've got to walk the walk, let's yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. As long as you don't bring your microscope and stuff to, you know, and take notes during the dinner, I, I feel like that would be fun. I, I think we should go out for dinner when you're in Sydney next. 
you know, and we can take <laughs> you to a Singaporean restaurant and have that lazy Susan situation or I don't know. Yeah. yeah chili yeah, yeah. crab. So, you know. Actually, no, no, Naris no. can show us how to, mm. how to do everything mm. in moderation. You know, do you think that's that's the actual thing? Like, well, let's just see what Naris would tell us about <laughs> it. Like, I want, I would love to go out to dinner with him and see actually how he does navigate something like a lazy Susan. Like, yeah. basically, does he let mm. it revolve a lot mm. um, till things fly off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just very circumspect. Let's find out. Mm. No, look, I do, I, I, I do have strategies. Uh, and I feel obliged that I should do it. I also want to do it uh, as well. Uh, and I completely understand that everybody is different mm. uh, and some of us need more dalliances than others. Oh, but if you, if hang you've on, got what are we talking about now? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, if, but, if you, but if you've got an intention to do something, if you've got an intention to improve your health, if mm. you've got an intention to improve heart health, then you have to do something. Mm. And then, you know, how you choose to eat is going to be one of the major players. Yeah. And it's how often are you going to do it? Yeah. And so you've just got so many opportunities in a day to make either a good decision, a not so good decision, a neutral decision. Uh, mm. And if you're thinking about mm. it, yeah. then you're going, to, you're going to head yourself either in in any one of those paths or directions. So yeah. when you see the average middle-aged woman, what are you finding actually when you're interacting with them? What kind of, you know, so-called diets are they attracted to? Mm. And what would you actually suggest to them? Like how do you how do you negotiate that kind of situation with a middle-aged woman? Yeah. Well, I think first of all, we're always bombarded by what's new. Mm. And so it just depends if I'm who I'm speaking to and and what what's their world like? Who are they talking to? What podcasts are they listening to? Hopefully, us. What is, what's you know what's coming in? What's coming in on their Instagram feed? Yeah. And I like I've been doing this for a long time. So every single year, every two years, it's going to be whatever the the new thing is, right? So at the moment, when I talk to women, it will be I'm really interested in intermittent fasting. Mm. So uh, mm. to what extent should I be doing that? Should I be doing sixteen eight? Should I be doing eighteen six? Should I be doing one meal a day? Or they're saying to me, I've got to keep my carbs low because it's all about keto right now. So I've been trying a keto diet and what, what should I be doing on that front? Here we go again. What is the latest detox? And my personal trainer has told me that I should be taking my vital greens and uh, I'm not having any alcohol for the next month, right? So always there's that context first because we all have a good idea of what it is that we should be doing. We may be doing some things or not, right? So they're the types of things that I'm, I'm hearing all the time. But again, as you said, the, the 40 plus and fabulous stress eating uh, yes, comes up yes. an awful lot. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that one's one. Now, how I feel in the late afternoon. Yeah, Why am I having yeah. these energy slumps? Yeah, yeah. I'm now working two shifts because I have my day job and then I come home, I deal with the family mm. and then I'm back on the computer again until 11 o'clock at night. Uh, why is it that I'm snacking crazily at 11 o'clock uh, and then I can't sleep well, right? And so that's having an impact on how I choose to eat. It's this type of stuff and then it's peeling all of those things away and coming up with strategies that are going to work for you. Yeah, so you actually look at that specific person and what they're doing and all of their sort of circumstances and you know, and also their weak points, you know, what what you know, what what do they indulge in? What yeah, they, I was gonna say like? it sounds <laughs> it sounds very bespoke. I'm intrigued because you're right, like I've noticed that too. Like every couple of years is like paleo Pete or there's this keto. I don't even know what keto is actually. But there's always a, an on-trend new diet and a lot of people I know are on that five and two thing. Are, are any of them actually valid? Like do they have their good points? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They're all valid by the sounds oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and mm. most of them will have good points. Uh, and then it can be to what extent do I do it? Am I all in, right? Some mm. people are you're either all in and you're all out right? Or am I going to do this 80% of the time? Or am I going to do it Monday to Friday and I'm going to ease off a little bit on the weekend? That's the 80-20 diet. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but, right. That's my favourite. <laughs> yeah, and so lot, so lots of them are coming from a place where they could do you some real good. Uh, there are others that perhaps you, we, we know we need to tread a little bit more carefully upon. What's an example of that, like? Okay, so one example might be that you've undertaken a keto eating pattern and you feel fantastic mm. as a result, but you go and see your doctor and blood tests show some numbers with, relate, with respect to heart health that really aren't looking so good. And now you're in a real dilemma. Feel fantastic. Mm -hmm. Body's responding beautifully, yet my health markers are saying red alert. What do I do? Oh, yeah. right? So there's, there's a dilemma that, that people can, come, can be up against. Other dilemmas might be I'm doing everything that my trainer has told me and I'm eating in this intermittent fasting manner and nothing's happening mm -hmm. or I jumped on my body fat monitor and I'm losing weight but I'm losing muscle at an astounding rate yeah. and I'm not losing as much body fat as I would like. Yeah, yeah. I right? think lots of, lots that, of that's a things. really interesting thing. I mean, they talk about like the yo-yo dieting and, and a lot of people say, look, I've tried every single diet and none of them work. But so why, why is that? Like how could you be on a specific diet and it doesn't actually work? So there's lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. One could be that you're forgetting certain parts that uh, let's say, for example, you're doing a wonderful job, but you've got a great social life and Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, there's <laughs> more bottles of red wine than you'd like to, to talk but about. But it's got antioxidants, uh, right? Is that, is that right, Norris? <laughs> Actually, I have, I have a good friend who really bought into the whole kind of 5-2 oh, idea, yeah. but he was forgetting that on the days when you were um, meant to be eating a normal diet, you're meant to be eating kind of a modest, normal diet, and he was <laughs> making, you know, like making hay while the sun shone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so, so there could be things like that mm. or you've under, you, you think, you know, you, you forget about some of the late night snacking mm. or you actually dig a little deeper and there's actually something fundamental going on and your thyroid function is subpar or you're taking a, um, an antidepressant and anti-anxiety medication and it's having an impact on your metabolism. So there's, there's lots of other things that can be at play and that's not meaning that everybody struggles but some people can think that they're doing the right thing and still not see not see a result. Yeah. And it just means need to dig a little bit deeper or find a way to, to really understand what's going on. So yeah, like you could actually, it sounds like you could actually be a good weight but not actually have great nutrition. Is it? Totally. Is that right? Like some girlfriends I know, like they they've suffered from like eating disorders in their childhoods and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and now they kind of don't eat a lot, and they're very like slim and they look great. But yeah, one of my girlfriends in particular, I kind of w worry that she's not actually eating enough nutrition, like n yeah. not a balanced sort of diet. Yeah, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. <laughs> uh, so. Thank you, Kate Moss, I believe. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. meant to have said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? So, like, what would you do if someone comes to you? Is there a, and you can see that they're like, you know, pretty, pretty trim and all that, but how do you find out whether they're getting kind of the right actual nutrition that they need for their age and stage, et cetera? Yeah. So, well, again, you know, the tools of my trade is knowing, first of all, a background of the person and I want to know how they eat, right? So if that, that's, that, that sits as, at the fundamental. So, mm -hmm. and, and again, you don't need to see somebody like myself. We all know what we eat because mm -hmm. we do it all day, every day, <laughs> right? So most people are going to have a fair idea of whether they're eating in a roughly healthy manner a horrendous manner, not at all, whatever it might be. No one's walking into this blind. Mm. And is there sort of um, uh, a key nutrient or vitamin that, that, that you see like a lot that's missing in the diets of women 40 plus? Well, there's, there are ones that, that women 40 plus need to think about mm. uh, and, it's, and it's not going to be just one, mm. but it's going to be, again, in lots of different contexts. It might be... Uh, a woman who uh, is 
already starting to show signs of osteopenia, for example, and a, you know, a, a breakdown of uh, bone integrity. And for them, it might be calcium, vitamin D as something that we need to look for. It might be a woman who has adopted more vegetarian uh, or vegan eating patterns and her energy levels are low and we really need to think about iron. Mm. It might be a woman who is predominantly vegetarian, doesn't eat much fish, inflammation is on the rise and it's their omega-3s. Mm. There's lots of, lots of key nutrients that may or may not be um, of importance and issue depending on each on each person's sets of circumstance. An under-muscled woman who has just discovered Ozempic is the next greatest <laughs> weight loss drug uh, and she's not eating very much, she's losing muscle and she really should be thinking about her protein intake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, hang on, Ozempic, I, yes. I, I don't know what that is. Like you guys probably do, obviously. <laughs> Well, actually, there are quite a few. So let's not um, let's not target down just on on one. There are quite a few, and actually, they're not bad. There are actually a, a few good drugs that are used now for people like who really do need to actually shed some kilos. So it'll have a good effect for a little while, and and then you may you know with a lot of this actually, I'm sure Naris finds the same thing. People, you know, unfortunately, it's not a set and forget. You can't just go, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it forever. But, you you know, you need a bit of a kind of multi-pronged approach where you do see um, fabulous, informative people like Naris and you do have a good relationship with your GP as well. And so, you, you know, you can have appropriate blood tests and maybe, maybe go on something like Ozempic or one of the new agents. Mind you, they're quite expensive. They tend to be private scripts and not kind of just handed out willy-nilly. Anyway, yeah, isn't yeah. enough on the oh, kind yeah, of no, drug but, front. Uh, but yeah. what, what do they actually do? Like, uh, how, how, do they, they, well, how do they work? They sl- do mm-hmm. slightly different things. Actually, Naris probably knows more about this <laughs> than me because I'm not this kind of um, general practitioner anymore. So, Okay, so Go. what they are is <laughs> they're, they're a class of drugs called GLP-1 agonists. Mm. Uh, they've been on the mar- market for quite some time and they've been becoming, in a sense, better and better and better. Uh, and then they hit mainstream and there's literally a worldwide shortage of them now and they come under different names and they keep being modified quite frequently if anything like updates of them with these various updates medical professionals can prescribe them for different reasons but a lot of them originally were for people who were regulating blood sugar control uh, and had type 2 diabetes but they can now be used as a weight loss driver for people who've got a certain amount of body weight to lose or body fat to lose. Who have the right amount of money and can get them on the, <laughs> currently on the black market. Yes, yeah. right. But what do yeah. they do? Do they do they? So they, they do lots of things. Feeling they work at the brain uh, level first at one point. Mm-hmm. So your desire to consume changes. They also have an impact on how your body goes about digesting food. Uh, So it can change on that front as well. It also has impact on various hormones that are secreted by the body. But the net result is is that you you generally end up consuming less calories in a day easily. And then lots of different markers of uh, blood markers change favorably. In fact, there's even, it's anecdotal, but I think it's moving more on that front. It even has impacts on how people may choose or desire alcohol consumption and how much. Mm. So people lose weight. But coming back to food, Mm. you really then need to be careful about thinking, what am I eating? Because Mm. if you're eating significantly less, Mm. what are you eating less of? And and, and at what cost is this coming at? So if you're going to take these things, it's take them, but you need to think about your eating patterns. You need to think about your exercise patterns, possibly even more so than before so that you don't end up six months later, 12 months later, weighing less and so much less muscle. How on earth are you going to ever get that back? Right. Yeah. It's interesting because we constantly hear this debate about what's the best way to lose weight and some protagonists say, oh, it's all about exercise. And others are like, no, 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 it's all about the diet. Do you reckon it's actually, it is actually both or is one more important than the other? It's both. Yeah. 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 
It's both. And I, I like to think of it as just levers that we have access to. Yeah. And, and those levers might be the medications that I'm taking, the supplements that I'm taking, the eating patterns that I'm choosing to have, the exercise that I need to be doing, the amount of sleep that I'm having. And in any given day or week, you're moving those levers up and down to try to compensate, to try to get where you want to go. And some people can't move one lever at all. You might be in a position where it's, you're you're re, it's really diff- Yeah, it might be really difficult to exercise because you've got two very damaged ankles uh, or, you know, really have a lot of osteoarthritis mm-hmm. and that lever's now stuck. Or well, then you're going to need to work a lot harder on the other levers to get where you wanted to go. It's good to have leverage. I always think. Yeah. <laughs> it is. How fascinating is this? Yeah, I know. I mean, I this know. is really interesting. You know, like my t- kind of example, being like in your 20s and kind of devouring everything and it kind of just doesn't seem to Society. touch the size <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and teenagers and all that stuff. Mm. But I became really conscious of that particular diet wasn't working for me when I sort of hit sort of 30-ish and 40-ish. Like, and it, But is that is a fact, right? So you, you, you can actually feel that something isn't, doing you the best job anymore. I think it's a really good idea. Every now and then you almost do a little bit of a review on yourself to say, where am I at? What is it that was working for me? Mm. Maybe it's not working for me now. Or having a good, good long look and saying, do I need to reframe a few things? And then part of that reframing might be how I'm choosing to eat or jettisoning off or modifying some of the habits or working towards some of the habits that used to be okay for me or I used to be able to get away with, but now I can't. (laughs) Uh, And and it's it's an honest look and saying, oh, that's what I now need to address, right? So I know personally I did that myself Mm. at a certain age. uh, What age, (laughs) Norris? How old were you? I did it when I turned 50. Really? Are you 50? Yes. No. No. I know. He's a very good advert. So We're sick. going to have him back to talk about longevity <laughs> yeah. because, look, I'm telling you, this man looks... He's a walking, talking example. Yeah, he's a walking, talking <laughs> example. That, let's just leave it at that. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. We interrupted. Sorry, sorry. But, yeah, so so a kind of a review, right? Okay. And, hmm. and and I think that's actually not a bad idea. But you, you see people see their financial planners and, mm. you know, you look at the various stages you are in, in your life and, uh, you know, you need to be earning money now because you've got two children at school, but once you get through that part, what's next, Mm -hmm. right? Mm. It's a good idea to do that for yourself sometimes. Some of us just do it naturally and then others, it might have to be a little bit more of a conscious decision. Yeah, I, I, I did it naturally when I started to fall asleep at the desk and yeah. I thought, you are. Oh, you know, I've, got you to, thought I've got to do something about the this. The all-night raves had stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah <okay. laughs> that's right. That had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> My last question, one more question. Um, yes. There's been a lot of stuff about food labelling these days, like uh, on processed products in supermarkets and all that kind of thing. Do you think that that's been a really, really helpful initiative or do you think that certain, you know, that you have to be so kind of almost scientific and well-educated to be able to interpret that, that it's not actually helping people? What do you think about it? Uh, I'll throw it back to you, so, <laughs> so do, 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 do both of you look at labels carefully or not at all or no. only a little bit? No, really I only look at the, the main label that says like low fat. Do you? Right? Yeah, yeah, but then I've heard that, you know, that usually equates to added sugar <laughs> right, <laughs> to make it right. taste better. Yes, yes. You know, there are so many yeah. messages coming yeah. from all fronts really. Yeah, um, yeah. So to be perfectly honest, I just ignore them all now. But a lot of people wouldn't be like me. So mm, 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 mm. Yeah, but I wonder, you know, if it's kind of made it more difficult for people to eat healthier food or should you just basically stick to fresh food and just buy a little bit of processed food and then just live with that? Yeah, so you could be very simple and say yeah. if, it's, if it's in a packet, yeah. I'm looking at the label mm-hmm. or, or I've already bought something that's in a packet. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't in a packet, then it didn't need a label. Yeah. So already I've got like a default win here. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can, you nice can be one. as blunt as yeah. yes or no, mm-hmm. packet or not packet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it might be within the packet, what am I looking for? And then the nice thing is, is in Australia, you've got a very clear labeling system. Mm-hmm. You've got but, you know, therapeutic goods and you've got all these rules so that marketing messages need to be somewhat careful and that all the information that you need to know is there if you want it. 
and you can go as granular as you like. Mm. And, so, and people are going to fall anywhere in the, I'm just looking at the front and if it says Macaroni. tastes awesome yep. to, <laughs> yeah. to the 14th thing down yeah. in the ingredients yeah. list that says I have a intolerance towards E37 yeah. four yeah. Uh, and yeah. I can't have this, yeah. right? But the scope is all there. But the, the good thing is, is that it's all there in the label if you need it, want it, and we can all educate mm. ourselves. Mm. But mm. You know, I bet less people are going to listen to a podcast on you know, the <laughs> ins and outs of a, of a label yeah. versus... I don't know. Uh, I was just about to um, suggest to Jan that we have you back and we talk about how you can eat packaged food. Food and still... Because I'm just thinking some people are very, very committed to it just for very ease. Committed. Yes. Yeah. And um, we should have a kind of episode on mm. how One to eat noodles. smartly, mm. but mm. how to eat smartly, but mm. packaged food. Yeah, how to live on MSG. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I just have one more cheeky question for you, Norris, because we love talking yeah. to you and we can't let you go. Um, we'll if, have him back. Yeah, okay, we'll have him back. But um, if you are going to have a cheeky, sneaky treat, <laughs> what treat would you have? Oh, this is So this is my sneaky treat? Yes. I like mm-hmm. dark chocolate bullets. Oh, okay. Wow, I would never have thought that of you. Looking at you. That's my really? favourite. That's uh, my favourite thing Actually, sounds pretty good time. to me yeah, too. Sounds good. Are they yes. the ones with the licorice inside? Yes. Yep. Oh, right. And yep. But because you're a nutritionist, do you just have like one? Oh, it's so sad. Okay, so... <laughs> Counts them out. Three. <gasps> but do you have them every day? And look, I was going to say that's actually great. No, 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 no. This is great. This is gold, um, Nara. So you have three, but do you have them every day? Because actually, them, there's no guilt involved. Do you have them consecutively? Yes. Yes. See, I really he has look them every day. I really look forward to them. So in our house nice. at the moment, it's either the dark chocolate bullets, yeah. and I'm not trying to sell products here, but I don't know if you're. It's like an old man's chocolate. Do you remember? Yeah, sure, old, sure, old, sure. Old gold. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I do, I do. It's still around. It is still around around. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, or two squares of original old gold. Lovely. Love it. Lovely. And that that just seals the end of my day. I I can remember a friend of mine saying to me, you know, when we were having babies and so everyone was concerned about losing weight, she said, I really love chocolate. What am I going to do? And I said, why don't you just have a little bit every day, like actually go and buy just a small Freddo and that's it. and I could just, yeah, and well, they sh- well they used <laughs> they to be. be. Yeah, well, they used to be. Anyway, and um, I can remember her eyes just glazed over. I could tell that she was not taking it in. But it is the kind of three-bullet principle. Uh, It's the three-bullet principle. It's the silver bullet. You can do it every day if it's a very, very, you know, small, controlled, enjoyable amount. Like, and you may as well choose wisely. Like, Naris is choosing wisely. Which is great. It's great if you're not an all-in or all-out, right? So if you're yeah. an all-in, all-out person and you've got your bag of bullets yeah. and then 30 minutes later you're in a bullet coma <laughs> because you just couldn't stop, yeah. then maybe the nightly hit is yes. not going to work for you. So, again, it's... Which is you, the beauty got, got of the small Freddo because it's only one tiny, weeny little packet and then you can't do anything else. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Not anywho. the giant ones. Well, Naris, it has just been absolutely fascinating talking to you. It's, in fact, it's been delicious. And thank you so much for <laughs> yeah, coming. Thank on you, Naris. She wasn't born yesterday. Gorge, I thanks for listening in today. We hope you enjoyed this ep. But we'd really love to hear more from you. We'd love to know exactly what you actually think of us and our guests. So if you're on Spotify, you can rate us. We love stars. And on Apple Pods, write us a little blurb. Let us know what you think and hopefully we can keep going. Apple loves their algorithms and we love you. So thanks for listening. We really enjoy your company. See you next week on She Wasn't Born Yesterday. <laughs>